Hey YouTube, I apologize. I'm a little bit stuffed up right now and uh, not feeling the greatest. But today's video is going to be about foraging and basically I'm just going to take a walk through my backyard and video all the different things that there are to eat. Uh, we're going to be mainly focusing on edible stuff, not any of the medicinal or tea stuff uh, in this video. I will do that in a future video. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. kick things off we're going to talk about the dewberry it's very similar to a blackberry just a little bit different um, it grows really low to the ground has these bright red stems with thorns that are more like tiny splinters um, very difficult to get out of your fingers but it's not quite a blackberry this is an actual blackberry plant so um, as you can see the fruits are a little bit smaller uh, they're not quite as sweet or as tart depending on the time that you harvest them uh, they're kind of just more bland but this is the typical blackberry that you're gonna find native to Louisiana. Uh, as you can see on these stems, the thorns are gonna be more of your typical thorns, um, smaller but not splinter-like. And that's one of the main differences between dewberries and blackberries as far as the stem goes. Also, these grow very tall and like a big bush rather than small vines that are low to the ground. So as you can see, this one here is loaded the berries will start as a dull green color, uh, then slightly ripen to a red, and then when they're ready to pick, they will be a dark black, dark purple kind of color. The next kind of berry I want to talk about is a mulberry. So these actually grow on trees. Mulberries have a very mild flavor. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Uh, the berries are about the size of a dewberry, just like very elongated, and uh, they stain your fingers a little purple color. All right, now this plant right here is very young. You can see it among all of this poison ivy below, but this is actually an elderberry plant. So I have quite a few of them growing in this little area. They're still way too young to really tell. All of this is being filmed at the same time. So you'll be able to see some things are in season, some things aren't, but this is just what a young elderberry plant looks like. All right, so from what we've learned, quick pop quiz, what plant is this? Three, two, one. All right, if you guessed a blackberry, then you would be correct. This next plant has a few lookalikes that can kind of trip people up, but this is actually a muscadine. Muscadines are a native southern type of grape. Um, the outside skin is not really generally eaten, and uh, it's got like this jelly-like substance inside. So this plant has been growing for like a year and a half, two years now. To the untrained eye, this also might look like muscadines. However, it's actually something called a gray bark grape which birds love to eat, but um, generally isn't consumed by people. And it, it looks very similar, has a very similar color on the stems. It vines out just like a muscadine, but you can see here the leaf shape is just a little bit different. It's more jagged on the edges. The skin of a gray bark grape is rougher and it's a little bit smoother on the muscadine. But that's one of the key differences. Um, muscadines grow about the size of a store-bought grape. They're just a little bit more spherical rather than oval and oblong. Moving on from berries, we're gonna look at some types of fruit trees. So this right here is a pear tree. Now this particular one, I'm not sure if it was planted or naturally grown, but this variety does exist naturally in my area. So um, I'm counting it in this video anyways. Uh, but this plant has obviously been taken care of pretty well. And this year is the first year it's actually put on fruit and it should be ready to harvest uh, late summer, early fall, sometime around then. And as you can see, the fruits have already started growing. I've got a couple. Um, that first one hits me in the head every time I walk to my pond and I still haven't learned somehow. But you can see up in the top, there's lots of different fruits growing right now. So here we can take a look at the type of leaves that it has. And another key way to know and identify a pear tree is by looking at the leaf orientation, like the way that it kind of grows. So I'm gonna take a pause right here. If you see, they kind of all grow from this tip of the same branch. And then they kind of grow out with like four or five leaves coming out at the end. And then you can obviously tell by the fruit on the tree, pears are very unique in their shape and color. And so you can tell what a pear is when it's growing. Now, when it doesn't have fruit and it only has flowers, they have these white blossoms, but uh, the bark is another key way. It looks a lot like if you were looking at some kind of oak tree, but again, the most identifiable way is by looking at the leaves and the way the leaves are attached to the branch. The next fruit tree I wanna talk about is a fig. Now, technically the part that you eat of the fig is actually the flower, which is really weird and kind of confusing, 
but I'm just going to call it a fruit just because that's kind of what we generally see them as. The leaves are easily identified because they have these big fuzzy wide leaves that are kind of lobed, kind of like a weird oak leaf, but it's just very, very wide. And also the branches and such, uh, they all have these little nodes growing out. Those are the figs actually growing. It's super easy to identify a fig tree, but it's a great plant to know and to have available. This next one is something that you might or might not know. It's actually a persimmon. So these plants, I recently had this yard brush hogged, and so these plants are very new, but uh, this is one that's a little more mature. They grow these orange fruits that are soft, but firm. It's kind of a weird type of fruit. It's hard to explain, but they are delicious and they ripen in fall. This next fruit is my absolute favorite. So it's not technically a tree, it's a vine, but it grows a big fruit and it's a passion fruit. So this is also called maypop or passiflora, but it grows these beautiful, beautiful flowers and then eventually these green fruit. Now when the green fruit are actually ready to eat, they'll wrinkle up and look like they're actually starting to rot, but it's actually the best time to harvest them. Uh, the leaves also have uh, good medical benefits, but I'm going to go over that in a different video. This is by far my favorite fruit that grows native in my yard. Uh, sadly, I have not been able to harvest many of them. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is a nut tree, and this is a pecan tree. So around here in Louisiana, we have a lot of wild native pecan trees. And so most people know what a pecan is. Uh, it's one of the most iconic things for the South is a nice pecan pie. Uh, I like to say pecan, but it's whatever. Uh, I've got a few of these on my property. I've got two just inside my fence. I've got this one a little bit further out towards the pond. Uh, it has not produced any nuts yet. It's still a little immature, but you can tell by this leaf structure that it's some kind of pecan. I'm not sure of the exact like variety name, but it's just the native kind we have around here. Now I'm going to move into things that are a little bit lesser known, like this bull thistle. So bull thistle I'm sure you've seen all over the place. Now these plants are a little bit older and they're not quite in the season I usually would pick them at. Uh, it's best to get them when they're real young. But you can actually eat the stems as well as the middle section of the leaves. So you can't eat the spines because they don't actually soften up. I mean, you could, but you're really gonna be in a lot of pain. Um, so these things grow everywhere. Uh, I personally don't eat them too often. Uh, it's just not really my thing. But if you're in a situation where you need to, these things grow everywhere. You can see I'm pointing out a few of them here and there, but yeah, they grow everywhere. Another thing that grows everywhere is clover. So this is white clover. Uh, it's edible. You can use it as like a salad. Um, there's also some medical stuff. We're not gonna talk about that right now. Uh, as you can see, this grows in most lawns pretty much everywhere, all over the place. And it's great to have as a lawn thing. It's great to feed your animals like rabbits or cattle. And it's just a great thing to have. Also it boosts nitrogen in your soil. An often confused look-alike is wood sorrel. This is actually called pink wood sorrel, and it has a lemony flavor to it rather than a grassy, like lawn clipping type flavor. Um, it's actually a really good treat, tastes similar to like, I don't know, a, a Sour Patch Kid or something. It's, it's very, very, very sour. Uh, it doesn't have too much sweetness to it, and you can't eat a lot of it because it has some kind of acid, but you can see here how it looks similar to a clover, but you can tell the differences apart. So they got more heart-shaped leaves, and also they don't have those white markings that kind of make a triangle. I have a ton of this growing by my fence as well as next to my house. And um, it grows very big. You can get these things that grow massive. They have very long stems and even the stems have that lemony flavor to them. But uh, this is something as cool as a treat to show a new forager, but not a meal. The next thing I want to talk about is dollar weed. Uh, it's got a few different names, pennywort, uh, as well as a few other things. But this is actually edible. The tops of these can be used in like a salad. Now it does have that like, you know, salad flavor to it. It's not gonna be like your pink wood sorrel or like a fruit or vegetable. Um, it's just gonna taste kind of like a, a lettuce or clover. And then this is something I've done a video on before and it's cattails. So cattails are actually edible on the bottom. So you can pull them up, strip the outside leaves and in the middle, there's usually a white core that tastes like a cucumber. Now in this particular plant, um, it, it was too young, so I didn't give it enough time to mature. Uh, but you'll know you have a nice mature one whenever there's a thick white core that snaps easily whenever you try to break it. So that's going to wrap up this video on foraging. Um, this was mainly focused on edible things, but I do plan on eventually releasing a video about tea plants as well as medicinal plants. I appreciate y'all's support and uh, your viewership. 
uh, if you don't mind uh, liking the video, subscribing for more content like this, I will be putting out that video pretty soon with the medicinal plants. Um, also, as of today, which this recording was done May 8th, so as of May 8th, I did finally shoot a coyote. So that video will be put out next, as well as a how to cook coyote. And so I'll do that later. But anyways, guys, as always, I love you, Jesus loves you, and have a great day.